Welcome to Rise and Shine Daily Business Tech Boost with me, Charlie Latham. If you're a small business owner looking to simplify technology and get real, actionable advice from someone with 35 years of IT experience, you're in the right place. Every episode, I'll dive into tools and systems like email, CRM, marketing and tracking, and break them down into bite-sized tips you can use right away. Your time is valuable, so let's get straight to the point. It's time to work smarter, not harder. Rise and shine. Eat your daily dose of business tech inspiration with me, Charlie Latham. Episode number 433 today. I am going to do a little bit more on Microsoft 365 and I'm going to cover rules or filters or whatever you want to call them. We did this in a podcast recently for the Google Workspace. Now I'm going to do it in Microsoft 365. Filters or rules, whatever you want to call them, are wonderful for organizing your messages to try and keep the clutter down in your inboxes, to be able to forward things on so that you can get automations going. Uh, it, honestly, filters filters make life so much easier. I'm pointing this out also because you may find once you've set up filters, that sometimes your messages go missing and you've forgotten you set up a filter. So I'm just going to remind you that this is where you should go and look. If you're having trouble finding messages and you find them ending up in funny places, check your filters first and make sure you haven't set up a filter that inadvertently catches your messages or you deliberately set it up and then forgot you've done it because I've never done that before. Let's move on. Going to change over my system and we're going to go and look at just my Outlook window today. So this is my Microsoft Outlook account. I use the online version. I you, It's similar within your uh, desktop version. I thought we're going to do it here on, on, on our web version. And to find rules and filters in your Outlook account, click on the cog at the top this little cog at the top you're going to get you're going to learn to love it i swear top right hand corner just across from the the far right there's a little cog click on that that brings up your settings panel this has put us into mail if it doesn't automatically put us into mail head down to mail and click on it and then in the second column along find the one that says rules find the option that says rules and click on it i don't have any rules set up did that deliberately so that i can do these demonstrations for you but let's go have a look to add a new rule you click add a new rule that's pretty simple i'm just going to call it test condition this is what does the rule have to meet what does the email have to meet to for this rule to trigger so let's have a look at our options here there's a lot of options as you can see We've got from people, who's, who is the message from? Who are we sending it to? Uh, email received for others. So this one would be if you are monitoring someone else's mailbox or they're forwarding messages to you or you've got delegation, it, it will come up. This is what this one will trigger. So, you've, so let me just go through. So I don't want to go into too much detail on all of these. Some of these you might, you might want to dig down onto. If I gloss over anything and you want to know more, just drop a, drop a comment wherever you're watching or listening to this video. Come across to my Locals community, askcharlieletham.locals.com and ask the question there. I, I will be happy to uh, at least attempt to answer it or find someone who can answer the question. Uh, so this is if it, we're... If, Messages coming from someone, going to someone, or they're received for others. Whether your name is in the to line, the CC line, if you're in on the to or CC line, so it's, it's either or. If you're not in the to line, uh, or if you're the only recipient, so you, it's where you are in the mail messages. Whether the subject has as a, a, a text string in it, or whether the subject or the body includes a text stream so that might be uh, my my great example on this one the one that i like to use is i forward my messages that come in that are invoices to zero so that they're automatically added to zero and i can just go in and, and fix up the drafts on them 
to be able to do that, I need to have a couple of rules set. One of the rules is it comes into the account that receives invoices. I ask people to send invoices to a specific account, uh, to a specific email address. If it comes in on that email address, if it has in the subject line invoice four, for example, uh, I may also include a body like this is your invoice for this your invoice is attached something like that they're the sorts of text strings that i would be testing for to make sure that the messages that are getting forward to zero are actual invoices and not just noise that comes in around that sort of stuff um what else have we got you can have keywords. So does the message body include, do the sender addresses include, do recipient addresses include? Uh, so these, this sender address and recipient address, this would be more a wild card. So if you remember, if you watch my Google Workspace one, uh, you can, I, I set up a couple of wild card filters for if anything received from uh, the domain or if the domain includes this domain name so it might come from a subject uh, a subdomain on that domain name and the wildcard would catch it that's the sort of thing we're talking about here whether the message header includes now that one's a little more tricky uh, let's, let's just put that in there and see what that gives us yep this is just going to be text so message headers will be does it have a x spam tag does it have an x list tag does it does it have sub, unsubscribe in it that Message headers are a little more tricky to work with. You do know, need to know exactly what you're working with. Uh, otherwise, it won't work or you'll just break it and it'll work on everything. So be careful when you're using message headers. Is it an important or sensitive message? You've, you can choose what stars, whether it's sensitive, what I'm sure you get that. Play around with this one. Does the message include a flag? Does it have a type? Does it have attachments? Uh, does it have, is the message size at least something or less than a particular size? Is it received after or before? And do I want to apply this to all messages? So you've got a whole heap of options here you can work with. So in this case, because uh, I don't have a lot of messages in this account, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, does the message have attachments? If the message has attachments, what's the action I want it to take? Here, I can say move it to a particular folder, copy it to a folder, delete it, pin it to the top so I don't lose it. Fantastic if you've got things that you need to keep it keep it top of mind. You can mark it as red, you can mark it as junk, you can mark it with an important, you can categorise it. You can uh, route it so you can forward the message to another address. You can put the address in here where you want to send it. You can put an external address in here. As long as, if you follow yesterday's uh, podcast, it will tell you how you can allow for external forwarding of messages to external addresses. Um, you can forward it as an, an attachment or you can redirect it to another user. So you've got a number of options here that you can use. Let's just say I want to move it to... Um, Let's create a folder, test folder, no, test folder, there we go. I'm going to split, click save. So when a message comes in that has an attachment, we're going to move it to the test folder. Not a great example. I'm sure you guys can extrapolate it out. Just trying to give you some ideas of what you can do. You can add another action. So this is an and action. So we're going to move it to the test folder and... We're going to pin it to the top. Okay, move to the test, pin it to the top. I don't know if they're, they, they're mutually exclusive. Good one to test. We can add an exception. We can do this for everything that's got an attachment unless one of these is actually set. If it's received before or if it's received after. Uh, now, the reason you might want to do this um, unless it's received before the 1st of January 2025. Now, the reason I want to add this exception, exception, is I can do a run this rule now, and this is going to run the rule on my inbox. It's going to do all of these things 
unless the message was received before the 1st of the 1st, 2025. Uh, we can, and the other thing that you should consider is if you don't check this stop processing more rules button, it will just go through the list of rules that you've got. It will just start at the top and it'll work its way down and it will process every rule in that list. So you've got to be really careful that if this is the only thing you want it to do, it stops processing the rules at this time. If you want to have chained rules, you do need to make sure you've got them ordered correctly so that they run in the right order. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Now, I'm not going to run this rule now. I'm just going to click on save because I'm going to show you guys how this looks. So now that when, when you come into your rules menu, when you come into settings, mail, rules, you can see you've got a rule set. Now I'm going to add another one. Um, test two. Going to say uh, if I'm on the uh, if I'm on the two line, what I want you to do is um, mark it with an importance of I. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to say, and I'm and I'm going to say stop processing the rule now. Okay. Just a really simple rule. Now you'll see that I've got two rules here and remember what I said that if you don't tick that stop processing rules box, it's going to just run through the rules until it hits a stop processing rules command and you can order your, or your rules. So I might actually, I'll do that again because I don't want to just run through this. You can reorder your rules by clicking the up arrow and moving them up and down and the down arrow to move them down. Or you see the, the six dots here on the left hand side. You can literally drag and drop your rules into the right order. Hopefully that gives you some idea on how you can use your rules. I would absolutely recommend testing them out, playing around with them. And just remember that if you're finding that your messages aren't going where you think they should, Come in and check your rules and make sure you haven't got something that would be te uh, breaking or, or causing that to happen, not breaking it, causing that to happen. If you want to edit a rule, you can or see what a rule is. You can drop, drop it down to read it. It will give it to you in plain English. And if you want to edit it, you can just click on the little uh, pencil and you can come in and edit the, chain, the, the rule yourself. There is this little option here that says, if your rules aren't working, generate a report. So it's now sent you an email with a diagnostic report. So it will go through and it will look at your rules. It will give you an idea of why they may not be working or they may be working. Um, if, they don't, if that doesn't make sense to you, that's the sort of thing that you would go and get some help with and say to someone, it's just not working. This is the, the report I've got. How do I fix it? What do I do with it? So guys, I hope that's been helpful to you. I am just going to come back here. There we go. I hope that's been helpful to you. Like I said, rules are really powerful. They're a great productivity tool. Uh, I recommend getting to know, like, and love your rule sets and be able to use them and, and, and really take your productivity to the next level. If you have any questions, of course, please drop comments wherever you're watching or listening to this video. You can come across to my locals community, askcharlieletham.locals.com. You get to ask questions in there and maybe even answer questions for other people if you've got something that you found worked really well and someone else is having a similar problem. Uh, you can send me a DM on any of our social media channels and I'll get back to you whenever I can. If this video was helpful, please, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Find out when I drop more content. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to Rise and Shine, your daily business tech boost. I hope today's episode gave you some actionable insights that will make your business tech work smarter for you. If you found value, be sure to subscribe, leave a review and share it with other small business owners who could use a daily boost. For more tips, tools and resources, visit www.askcharlieletham.com. Until next time, 
keep rising, keep shining, and let's make tech simple together.